Well, before we get to the movie, I want to talk about comedy sports. Yeah. This is something that we both got our start in, sort of. Yeah. I found out recently that I'm on their Wikipedia page. Oh. As a notable past performer. There's only 29 people on that list. I'm the least famous of everyone. Okay. It lists me as director, voice actor, playwright, Ooh. and comedian. So. Comedian last. Comedian last. Yep. Film critic, not on the list. <laughs> that I don't mind. Okay. You consider yourself a film critic? No. Oh. What are we doing here? Welcome to the basement, Mike Essercon. Hey! Do you know what movie is in this envelope? No idea. We're going to watch it and we're going to talk about it today. Yeah. Sci-Fi July may be over, but that doesn't mean that we can't take a fantastical journey together. I'm very excited about this right now. I didn't think I'd be this excited. I know you can feel the wind picking up, so you better put on your fancy shoes and prepare to return to Oz. Oh, you've not seen this movie? No. I have seen this movie multiple times. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I love this movie. I'll see it again, gladly. Released in 1985, RTO stars Feruza Balk, Nicole Williamson, and Piper Laurie. The director was Walter Murch, who is far better known as an editor of some renown. Mm. The Godfather, Apocalypse Now, and American Graffiti among some of his credits. I also read his book on editing, which is great. Murch was briefly fired from the film when the studio was dissatisfied with his work. But after intervention from Francis Ford Coppola and George Lucas, Disney rehired him. This is the only film he has ever directed. It also received an Oscar nomination for Best Visual Effects. I, well, as a child, I uh, had a lot of dental work. And dental work used to, seems to be, take longer back then. Oh, yeah, it was awful. Sit and wait for stuff to dry. And uh, I was, was reading the Oz books. There's a whole series of Oz books. There's like 20 of them. Yeah, I think they have one called Return to Oz, although it's not. this is not based off of, of any single book. Yes. Which is a shame, because they have a bunch of books, and they could have just made 20 films. Maybe the books aren't filmable. They're They're fairly whimsical and... Sure. Magical and stuff, or, or not, wouldn't read for a modern audience. Yeah. But I, I always felt it was like a waste of material. They have this material, they could do that. The ruby shoes they were in the book are not ruby. Diamond. Okay. They probably thought what's going to contrast best with the yellow brick road. It's a good choice. I have a gift for you today. This is a custom here in the basement. Yeah. And it's a weird coincidence that I picked a movie that is so beloved to you. In fact, you might even say it's Kismet. Ooh. <laughs> The Great New Game of Yacht. Of Yacht. This is definitely not a Yahtzee ripoff, despite this strange claim. Yeah. Looks like Yahtzee. Well, it's your game now. Oh boy. I look forward to losing money at it. <laughs> well, we may not have a yellow brick road here in the basement, but you can follow us on over to the old leather couch because we are going to experience the fancy and the fantasy of Return to Oz. Return to Australia. <laughs> I'm ready. Return to Oz begins six months after Dorothy's original trip to Oz. Dorothy can't sleep. We are in Kansas anymore. Auntie M, could you tell the mournful violins to stop? <laughs> I'm trying to sleep. It's past one o'clock in the morning, Dorothy. It's time to party! She's been telling her aunt and uncle these crazy stories, and they don't like it one bit. They're going to take her to see a therapist. Dorothy's poking around in the chicken patch. Toto, no! Toto, stop blessing the rains down in Africa. And she finds a key. This is an Oz key. I remember Oz. It's real. Key, solid thing is real. They leave Uncle Henry and Toto behind, and Auntie M takes Dorothy to see a shrink. Toto, go home! Of which there is no place similar to. That's no way to hang a flag. Just Don't worry, boss. I know how to hang a flag. Like one pin in the middle, right? You hoist that part up real high. <laughs> she tells him all the stories about the cowardly lion. You mentioned something about a, a tiger. A lion. Idiot. A lion. <laughs> and he could talk, too? Well, he kind of did Scooby-Doo talking. He would say rut row instead of uh-oh. You know, a lion. <laughs> the doctor doesn't seem convinced at all. Dorothy? Sounds like BS to me. But what he is convinced of is his therapeutic practices involving this big scary machine. And zap all the bad thoughts out of her head. Now this fella here has a face. Mm -hmm. It's a cruel face. It's a face that's going to make you cry. One that will haunt your dreams. Will it hurt? What? No, no. It'll be fine. You'll only drool regularly. You won't drool profusely. <laughs> it's nothing but a machine. 
I must get back to Henry before nightfall. You understand, don't you? He needs to be chained up before he turns into a werewolf. She's in good hands, Mrs. Proof. And soon she'll be in good straps. Auntie M just leaves her niece here at this frightening sanitarium. Dorothy is tossed into a dusty room. She sees this little girl who's creeping around. Here's a pumpkin. We can be friends. Outside, a storm is brewing. I have to go. The thunder beckons. Is that you, Slenderman? <laughs> Would you like to go for a ride, Dorothy? This woman's bedside manner is um, terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> I want to wear my dress with the sharpest points. <laughs> why do you have to tie me down? Ralph Nader, that's why. <laughs> And they roll her off to where the machine is. The electroshock brain machine. Pretty soon they'll draw all those unpleasant dreams out of your head. And all those multiplication tables. They hook her up. Those beats by Dre. It's beats by Tesla. They're about to administer the first jolt. <laughs> Damn it, we can't torture the child now. The adults go off to fix this leaving Dorothy there in the room by herself. Who's there? Oh, Jesus! Let's get out of here. You hear that screaming? Their patients have been damaged, locked in the cellar. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Are they in Arkham Asylum? <laughs> Will the Olsen twins get out of this mess? <laughs> and they run outside into the rain. They're chased by the sanitarium employees. They fall in the river and they get washed away. Dorothy finds this piece of debris that serves as a useful raft. There's no place like floating trash. There's no place like floating trash. Unfortunately, she can't find that little girl, but she floats off down the river. In the morning, she discovers her chicken, Belina, is with her. Where did she come from? I've never been so wet in my whole life. I've never been so turned on by a chicken before. If we were in the land of Oz, your talking wouldn't be strange at all. Oh, I must be back in Oz. I think I'll have myself a look around and uh, see if I can find myself some breakfast. Wait! Oh! Careful, don't choke the chicken. But Dorothy realizes that this is the deadly desert. She and Belina hop across the rocks to safety. The rocks have faces. One of the rock faces goes down into the earth and talks to their master. She has returned to Oz. Good. It's a lunch pail tree. How whimsical. Make sure you don't pick a green one. <laughs> Come share my life with me, Belina. Share my life with me? <laughs> she finds the yellow brick road. It's all busted up. She goes to Emerald City. Ten minutes it takes them to get to the Emerald City. Less time. You know what? I think because they didn't sing as much. In the original one, they sang a lot, and that took more time on the road. And finds it in ruins. Well, not moving very fast, are they? They've all been turned to stone. ELO must have toured through here. These ones have lost their heads. They're probably fine. There's a sign that reads... Beware the wheelers. The wheelers do indeed show up. Come here! Whoa! <laughs> oh man, this is nightmare jet fuel. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Burning Man. <laughs> Timothy Chalamet, you get out of here. She's got that key that she found by your house. She opens up the wall and hides from the wheelers. They say to her, you shouldn't have that chicken with you. The Gnome King doesn't like chickens. The Gnome King? Who's the Gnome King? In this little hidden alcove, she finds this mechanical man. He's got a bunch of dials on his back, so she winds them up and he comes to life. I am Tick Tock, the Royal Army of Oz. From now on, I will be your obedient servant. And you will get me lots of views and followers, for I am Tick Tock. <laughs> this is how I walk after I've had dinner at a Brazilian steakhouse. <laughs> the wheelers find them again. Put them up. Put them up. <laughs> You'll be sorry for treating me like this! <laughs> I'll bet that today this actor can't watch this movie. <laughs> no, I can't. I was doing a lot of cocaine back then, and that performance is just too painful to watch. The person who controls the wheelers is this woman named Mombi. They're gonna go see her. The Gnome King has kidnapped the Scarecrow, 
And the Scarecrow is the ruler of Oz, I guess. They find Mombi. She's relaxing, playing her ukulele. Free bird! I borrowed this dress from David Bowie. It's his casual wear. <laughs> Mombi has all these heads in cases. And she can take off her head and switch it around, depending on her mood. She puts on a different head, which looks quite familiar. Hey, Dorothy, you got a nice head. I think I'm going to trap you in the tower for a few years until you get nice and older, and then I'm going to take your head for my own. Tick-tock can't help because his action runs down. If this is ours, Dorothy, I'd rather take my chances back in Kansas. Polina. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Careful, the horse, he's got the pox. <laughs> She's trapped in this dusty old tower and she hears a voice. His name is Jack Pumpkinhead. Would you please check my head for signs of spoiling? How does it feel? Very nice, sir. Am I still an abomination of nature? <laughs> Where did she get all those different heads? Did you see the headless dancing girls outside? Yeah, not from there. <laughs> Here I am. Oh, a stone cold goof. <laughs> what happened to your mother? She vanished. Vanished? That's not much of a mother. Here's what we have to do. First, we have to escape from the room and then go wind up the robot. Tick-tock. You don't stop to the... Tick-tock, you don't stop to the... There's this stuff called the powder of life that can bring inanimate objects to life. So they create this vehicle that they're all going to escape in. What's that? The head of a gump. He's like a moose, but he's called a gump. All they need to do is sprinkle the powder of life on it and it will be able to fly. Dorothy goes and steals the powder of life. I hope that's pure Colombian powder of life because that's the good <laughs> shit. Yeah. His brains ran down. Oh, thank goodness, Dorothy. I am all right now. I just need a little bump. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they sprinkle it on the thing and their chariot becomes animated. They get inside and off they go. All our main protagonists on a couple of couches in the air. <laughs> the last thing I remember is walking through the forest and hearing a loud noise. Then I went into the darkness. I saw the edge of the universe. There was nothing beyond it. I'm awfully sleepy right now. But I'm also hungry. Could you shoot an egg out of your <laughs> ass so I can have a little snack? In the morning, they realize that the shoddy construction of the flying boat is having an adverse effect on its structural integrity. It starts to fall apart. Jack's head falls off. We'll save you, Jack! Oh, 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 oh. Can you hear me, Jack? I think Sir Isaac Newton would take some issues with this scene. Then the thing falls apart and they all fall down onto the side of a snowy mountaintop. Tick-tock! His name is Tick-tock. Shouldn't he be constantly bumping and grinding to Latino dance music? Because that's the Tick-tock that I know. Every head must have a body if it expects to get around. Doesn't look like there's much of any place to get around to. <laughs> the mountain starts talking to them. It's the Gnome King. We've come to ask you to release the Scarecrow. An earthquake happens and Dorothy falls through a crack. The Gnome King's realm is where all the precious jewels are made. And he's convinced that the Scarecrow stole the emeralds that were used in the creation of Emerald City. So imagine how I feel. When someone from the world <laughs> Don't cry. I know just the thing to cheer you up. A metric ton of granite. <laughs> you and your friends can play a little game. I got this room full of stuff. One of those things is the scarecrow. I transformed him into a thing. You get three guesses each. If you touch the right object and say the word Oz, the scarecrow will be restored. And I send you home. All right, we accept. What they don't know is that if they guess wrong, they get turned into an object themselves. They send in the gump first. Guess is wrong. Next. Jack Pumpkinhead goes in. Guess is wrong. Object. And the chicken as well, because she was nesting in his head. TikTok gets turned into a thing. Are you sure you didn't come back? Believe me. Oh, you cheeky devil. Ruby slippers. Click your heels together and say whatever you wish. And that wish comes true. I could give them to you and you could go home. You can just forget about these weird friends of yours. They've been turned into plates and cups or whatever anyway. So forget about them. There's no place like home. Mm, 
Depot. You won't believe the savings. But she resists the temptation. And she makes two wrong guesses. She's only got one left. Then she sees a big gem. It's an emerald. Could this be the scarecrow? Oz! Dorothy! The big doof comes back to life. Everybody's been turned into a green thing. Oz! The gump comes back to life. Pumpkinhead comes back to life. This makes the Gnome King furious. He doesn't like losing his own game. Gnome rage. Everything starts collapsing. Oh, we gotta get out of here. I'm just gonna eat all of you. He picks up Mr. Pumpkinhead, but remember, Belina the chicken is inside his head and she finally lays an egg. That egg goes into the Gnome King's gullet. <laughs> Eggs are poison to gnomes. That's why he banned chickens from Oz. Oh, Belina has committed gnomicide. Rockicide? Gnomicide. Rockicide is my favorite Scorpions album. <laughs> Rockicide! The Gnome King dies. Dorothy gets those ruby slippers and does a quick wish for everything to be normal and right again. And she gets her wish. There's a big celebration. Goodbye, Dorothy. Oh no. <laughs> Goodbye, Cowardly Lion. Sorry you didn't get any lines. <laughs> Maybe next time. And Dorothy, in standard Oz fashion, is sent back home. Goodbye, Big D. She wakes up on the banks of that river. She's found by Toto and Uncle Henry. Now she knows that she doesn't need to talk about what happened to her. Don't talk about it to your parents because they'll send you away to a mental institution again. She only needs to cherish the memories of her return to Oz. How was your return to Oz this time? How did it hold up? It holds up well. I, I enjoy it. I don't understand why it's so dark. I don't know what they're trying to do. Make it more different than the original one or something? They certainly introduce a sense of danger at yeah, the beginning. Yeah, too much, I think. That's always kind of bugged me about the movie in general. The wheelers are terrifying. The part I was most terrified, though, is the deadly desert. The thing. deadly desert, That's, yeah. And also, I don't like the idea of being turned to stone in general. You get the sense when you see all those stone people, they're going to come back. But yeah. when you turn to sand and crumble, and crumble away, away, you're gone. Here's this familiar place, but it's all in ruins now. Now, what happened while you were gone? I kind of like that mystery of it. It's a fantasy world, but the fantasy is not necessarily eternal. It's fallible. It's, it's so changeable. So it's said in the credits that this is based on two of the books of the series. The yeah. Land of Oz and Ozma of Oz. Now, you read the whole series. I, many years ago, I did. What wasn't in the books. Yeah, so Jack Pumpkinhead is in the books. TikTok is in the books, but I think he's in a different book. I think they brought his character in from another book. Yeah. I don't recall the Gump being in, in the books. And he's one of my favorite characters in this movie. I like him a lot. I like his... The way he looks. His, his face. Yeah. The way his face moves, yeah. There's no CGI. What about Real. the face saying, my lord, she's back. Wasn't that it's animated? claymation, though. It's like, That's claymation. It's like, yeah. I love that. That was really impressive. That was the most impressive effect in the whole movie. Practical effects just have an extra weight to them, an extra, like... They've got a texture to tactile in this to them. Yeah. yeah. The charm of the practical effects holds up. N not necessarily your ability to suspend disbelief. Right. And a lot of those visual effects were done by Will Vinton, who is the man behind the adventures of Mark Twain, which we watched very recently on this show. Oh. So you said something interesting on the couch. Did I? You brought up the things that happened in the beginning part, the reality part of the story. Yeah. She gives her a pumpkin for Halloween. That's Jack Pumpkinhead. The squeaky wheels on the gurney. Those the are the wheelers. wheelers yep. TikTok so was done. He's got a face. He's a robot man. Yeah. He's your friend. Yeah. Was the gump anywhere in there? In the background, there was a moose head on the wall. Because I remember seeing it, and I didn't say anything because I didn't want to give anything away. The Wheeler costumes were really interesting. I sort of had a tough time seeing how the physics of them worked. But clearly, those actors didn't have quite enough time to master. <laughs> Some who were better than of... others. <laughs> that was not in the script. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was interesting, that you're seeing them sort of like stumble around. Yeah. And, and it's, just, it's just very human. So here's a fun fact. Did you watch the Sandman TV series? Or did you read the graphic novels? I did the audio book of the graphic novel. I understand. What? I was reading a lot of, or listening to a lot of who, audio books. Who even makes such a thing? It exists. They, it's kind of neat because they do kind of a radio show. They have sound effects and stuff with it. And, oh, and some okay. Music, so it's not, it's not just a one person reading. I read that. I glanced at the book. And I watched the first episode or two of the show. When you go into the realm of Morpheus, yeah. Pumpkinhead is a character in the Land of Dreams. He's a janitor. And in the show, he's voiced by Mark Hamill. Oh, okay. Well, Return to Oz has clicked its heels together and gone back to where it came from. And now it's time for us to go over to Seen It. Seen It! 
Mr. Bear Piero writes, The usual suspects. This may be controversial, but I hated the twist. Seen it. Seen it. I saw this with you at that old house on River Street that we used to live together. Yeah, okay. And, and when I watched it, I fell asleep. The first time <laughs> I watched it, I fell asleep in the middle of it. Right. And I woke up just in time to see the final scene. And I thought, oh... Now I have to go back and watch this again. It's a surprising twist. As I, I think it's a good mystery. It's a good crime movie. It's a good cop movie. Yeah. It's got a hell of an ensemble. Mason Chanel's uh, The Green Mile. Seen it. Seen it and read it. I have also read it. You're a Stephen King completionist, aren't you? I am a Stephen King completionist. That's right. Do you recall when this came out in book form? Like a chapter at a time. I worked in a bookstore when I that happened. I was working in a bookstore as well at that yeah. time when they were coming out and they were like these little teeny books. And I thought this was either a really great idea or a really stupid idea. He never did it again, so, so I think it was not a great yeah. idea. I remember watching the movie and finding it a little silly, but I read the novel and thought it was very moving. I think Stephen King's villains come across way better in books than they do in movies. They uh-huh. all Because I think you can get away with being a little more over the top in a book. Yeah. But then seeing that actually acted out on screen is like... Mm. Michael Clark Duncan received an Oscar nomination for this Certainly deserved, but this was the acting role of Michael Jeter's career. He played the Cajun fellow. The bad death of Edward oh, El- yeah. Edward Delacroix, I believe. Was yeah, 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 yeah. That performance by him, and Michael Jeter's always been good, but I don't think he's ever been given great roles. Yeah. And this was a case when he was, and he just... Uh, home run all the way. Huh. The Joe Dean. RRR is too long to watch on Welcome to the Basement, so you need to talk about it during Seen It. I've seen it three times. It's simply the best way to spend three hours. Seen it! Seen it! (laughs) I felt a lot of things during the three hour. Yeah. It's a ride. There's a lot going on. Yeah. Yeah. It's got a hell of a first 20 minutes. Yep. It's got a hell of a final 30 minutes. Yep. A lot of the stuff in between, though, did not connect with me. And I haven't gotten into Bollywood movies. I believe this would be classified as a Bollywood movie. I think this is a Tollywood. I just learned this recently. There's Bollywood and Tollywood, which are both India. Okay. And Tollywood's like the the more the newer upstart one. I don't know. Okay. Bollywood's right. a more established one, so it has some apparently the same elements, but is okay. different. I stand corrected. But Indian movies, yeah. like Korean movies, like you know uh, some some uh, Chinese or Japanese films, they just have ways of doing drama and melodrama and the ways of selling emotional moments that don't always land to a to a Western palette or yeah. to my particular Western palette. And so I found a lot of these moments that were supposed to be very emotionally moving, they kind of rang false for me. Prof Shad says, have you guys ever seen The Mouse That Roared? Seen it. I intended to see it for this discussion. I only got halfway through it. I didn't have the time to finish it. And I told you you didn't miss much. (laughs) I think I've seen enough. I kind of know where it's going. Yeah. It's a rather stupid movie. And I don't mean that entirely negatively. I think it knows how stupid it is. And sort of presents itself as such. Yeah. I watched this movie because I wrote a play that had the similar plot. The premise of the movie is that there's this poor country, it's the smallest country in the world, and they're destitute. And so they decide to declare war on the U.S., immediately surrender, and then get all this humanitarian aid from the U.S. Yeah. It's kind of a funny premise. It's not a plan that wouldn't work. I think it would work. <laughs> and Peter Sellers plays three different characters, which was his jam. But I don't think he does it very well. His characters are not interesting they're at not all. They're not inspired. The main protagonist guy is just a guy. There's He's just other... this meek little sort of like... Yeah. The prime minister of the country, yeah. who's more of a blowhard. There's not much character to him. And then he plays a woman. Who he goes, plays, hmm. Yeah, right, there's mean. nothing to that. They thought they were like, well, Jessica is a woman. That's joke enough. And it's not. There's a place that maybe you've gone to and you'd like to return to. And that's our website. Welcome to TheBasementShow.com. All of our episodes are there. You can watch as many as you can stand in a day. And there are PayPal donation buttons that you can click on and make a one-time or rolling monthly donation to support this show. Support of this show is greatly appreciated. And I have two rolling monthly donors I would like to single out. They are very generous. Their names are Clayton and Eric. I understand that you do things on the internet as well. I do. I've got a, a website where I sell my art. Uh, you can buy prints of things and books I've written. It's my name, Essercon.com. I'll um, put that on the screen because the spelling is a little... Yeah, sorry, that's my, my grandpa's fault. And then I have uh, my Patreon site where I publish art every week. Um, and that's uh, patreon.com slash Um 
So every week I, I do a little mini art gallery where I, I put f- five new uh, pieces of artwork up there. And they can find out about all your live stuff that you do on those, yep. those two locations. Yes, as well. There's information okay. all there about all the other... Follow me. Follow me however you want. Well, this is the beginning of August, which means that in one month, Craig will return and visit with us for an episode. I just wanted to remind you of that in case you want to send him a postcard or just look forward to his presence. And I also would like to talk about something that happened with our Meg episode. There were some copyright concerns. It did end up being taken down, but never fear. I have re-uploaded it. If you go to the website, welcome to thebasementshow.com, you can watch the Meg episode there and only there. You can't watch it on YouTube. Mike is not going away just yet. He's going to join us this coming Friday for unboxing. We've got some mail to open. We've got some questions to answer. It's going to be a lot of fun. Right now, take a look at this. But she was wearing Head 22 at the time and must not have worn it since because she hasn't remembered I'm up here. The thing about Head 22 is that you have to have a head to be able to put it on, but you can't have a head until you put it on. (laughs) It's a real Head 22. 